Well, we came here for one major reason, and that is Goliath the Dwarf giving us some lore. Hooray! Yeah. All right. So, uh, for context, especially uh, for anyone who might be listening to this uh, later from now, uh, we are talking about the race of the Tauren because uh, with the new mini set, uh, we have uh, some Tauren antagonists who are attacking the Festival of Legends. Uh, we have uh, one of the uh, leaders uh, named uh, Magatha Grim Totem, who is now a legendary card, and figured it'd be good to give everybody some context as to exactly you know, who these people are, why are they such a problem here, but uh, of course, as always, in order to answer a simple question, why are these four on attack music, we have to go back, well, uh, not not to the beginning of time, but uh, uh, pretty far. Uh, we are going back, let's see, uh, according to my... Well, let me... Here. While you oh, look that over, up... Let over me... 12,000 years before the events of Warcraft 1 with the orcs in the dark portal. So, back so in my day. I'm disappointed <laughs> we're not going back to the beginning of time. I feel like we're always going back to the beginning of time at some point and being like, okay, well, there is this and the void and the void's bad. And like, I, I just, I missed that part. Right. Well, Hey, w one thing before we kick this off, I do, let me give my, my quick disclaimer that I do every time for those of you listening to the audio version, I really appreciate you listening to the audio version, but we do have graphics queued up for all of the things that we'll be talking about. So if you want to be able to visualize as Goliath paints this picture and tells us the story about the Torin and their various relatives and enemies and so forth. Uh, tune into this um, on YouTube where you can watch the version with the graphics so you can kind of see what we're talking about as well. So we've got pictures from the art of the game, from the Hearthstone cards, from World of Warcraft and that type of deal. So it, you'll, you'll get a little bit of a different experience that way. But anyways, all right, carry on. My way. Okay. So, uh, we are going, I mean, Swoopy, would you like us to go back to the void and everything? I mean, no, we don't have to, we don't have okay. to. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, for a lesson. <laughs> yes. So yes. one of the, inter so you can essentially divide all races on Warcraft into, uh, three categories. One is, uh, small, medium and large. <laughs> um, tall, from and from Titan Vindy. Creations. <laughs> so, okay, we will briefly touch into uh, Void and Titans and all that stuff, <laughs> for Snoopy's sake. So, basically, <laughs> when when the if you guys remember that uh, the the Titans came in order to uh, free Azeroth from the old gods, and because mm -hmm. they were so big, uh, they were like, if we do the fighting, we're just going to destroy the world in the process. Uh, so they made smaller, but still massive on uh, on a human scale, um, uh, minions, you might say, or or avatars, uh, helpers in general, to fight the battles for them. Uh, I've made the comparison before. It's like uh, you making tiny little robots to fight the ants in a sandcastle or something. Um, and a lot of those... Uh, and uh, the various creations that those Titan creations made uh, became various races that were eventually uh, corrupted by the Curse of Flesh, which we talked about in our yogg Saron episode. Uh, and so there's a huge amount of creatures on Azeroth that are descended from that. The humans, dwarves, gnomes, um, the Tolvir, uh, the Mogu, we'll get into those later, and just like a, a bunch of them. So that, that's one category. The second category are full-on, like, immigrant slash invaders from other worlds. You would put, like, the orcs and the Draenei into this category. They are literally from other planets in the cosmos, the uh, the orcs from Draenor and the Draenei. Well, they were they lived on Draenor for a while, and that's why it's called Draenor, actually. Uh, but then originally from Argus, and it's like, they just kind of live on Azeroth now. No native connection at all. But there is a large portion of races on Azeroth that are natural evolutions that uh, you guys remember the um, the Well of Eternity. We've talked about that a decent amount of times. Big magic arcane well in the center of the ancient world. Uh, and it's kind of helped uh, 
speed up the evolution of a lot of species on Azeroth. And then, of course, there are also the wild gods, uh, creatures that often would birth various animalistic races in their own images, like uh, the Quillbore have uh, their uh, Boar Ancient, and uh, the Tortolan have Tortola, and a lot of things like that. Now, we don't know the precise origin of the Torm, but it's likely one of those two things, or a mixture of the two. Bran Bronzebeard actually, in the story has notes where he thinks that maybe the Torn are descended from some unknown wild god, Bull Ancient, but um, we don't know that for certain. What we do know is that the very first Toron were a different race uh, that are called the Yungle. Uh, they are much more uh, yak looking. <laughs> they're than much the more, younger. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, they're the oldest, yeah. actually. Uh, and they uh -huh. roamed uh, the plains of central Kalimdor, because remember, back uh, still at the point where it's all one massive continent here, because War of the Ancients hasn't happened, hasn't been split up yet. And uh, they actually were best buds with our old friend Cenarius. Uh, they were a whole, mm. you know, live at peace with nature type of thing. Uh, but they had a little problem that they were having to share their hunting grounds with uh, the other, uh, well, the main dominant species at the time, the trolls. Because uh, the trolls, that they are like the peak evolution of that whole natural species on Azeroth here. You know, they can just regenerate their lost limbs and have powerful magic and all that stuff. So uh, a lot of the Yungle decided that they wanted to uh, migrate south. Uh, Scenarius said, no, don't leave. But uh, they decided to just, you know, try to find new territory. And so they ended up reaching the borders of the Mogu Empire. Now, the Mogu, as we already said, that is one of those um, uh, ra titan races. But uh, they had kind of uh gotten pretty tyrannical over time uh after they lost the the guidance of the of their keepers uh do, largely due to uh this one named lei shen who we have as a shaman portrait who has this whole story that i hope to go into more detail in a, in a future if blizzard finally gives us a pandaria expansion please blizzard please do this please. for us um but uh, essentially lei shen had this whole thing where he uh, found uh, Titan Keeper Ra, who, you know, we, we have as a card from the Moku Cultist, mm -hmm. and um, he uh, turned out that Ra was just having this depressed existential crisis where he refused <laughs> to help and thought that everything was pointless, and so Lei Shen is like, okay, then I'm going to do stuff instead. He rips Ra's heart out, consumes it, and suddenly he has the power of a Titan, and uh, makes this whole... It's uh, pretty metal. Yes. <laughs> that is it's, that it's is pretty, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> it even makes this whole tyrannical Mogu empire that enslaves all the other races, like the Hosen, the Pandaren, the Jinyu, uh, a bunch of races that uh, we do have in Hearthstone thanks to the Jade Lotus faction in uh, Mean Streets of Gadget Sand. But the Yongle kind of stumble into all this, and they end up getting enslaved as well. Uh, the... Uh, Mogu Emperor at the time was named Quang the Merciless, uh, which um, probably indicates uh, his personality there. And uh, he ordered, yep, yeah, he ordered his flesh shapers to enhance the bovine race's strength, savagery, and intelligence, according to the uh, Warcraft wiki here. So basically, they kind of went under forced evolution slash eugenic stuff in order to make them more ideal slaves. Um, eventually there was a rebellion, um, led chiefly by the Pandaren, which is actually how the, uh, the whole monk class developed because they were able to disguise learning how to fight as just dancing. And so you get the wow version of martial oh. arts there. So they led a rebellion, the uncle joined in and eventually, yay, we're free of the Mogu. But they started to have a lot of, uh, disagreements between them of, uh, what they should do, because as typically happens with an oppressed race by a tyrannical empire, they lost a lot of their sense of history and culture. Uh, some of them wanted to stay down there. Others wanted to try and reconnect with Scenarius and reclaim some of the stuff that they had lost. 
And so uh, you have this this splitting, this migration back up north. Some of them choose to stay down in what would eventually become Pandaria. And so the race of Yungle does exist in that fashion today. But others uh, went up north and became uh, what we would call the Toran and the Tonka. Now, the Tonka, which uh, we now have exactly two cards depicting in Hearthstone, uh, we have uh, the... Uh, let's see, uh, what are they called again? Big Dreams uh, and the Strong Shell Scavenger. Strong Shell Scavenger, yes. Say, that's a Battlegrounds card. Right. <laughs> I know, I, I was almost surprised remembering, wait, that's actually a, 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 a real card that came out what back the, in Frozen Throne. What are the distinguishing features? Like, what makes, how do you know it's a it's a Tonka and not a, not a Torn? Well, they are far more bison-like in appearance, uh, less cattle, say. So the Tonka are basically the bison, the Toran are cattle slash bulls, and the uh, Yungle are far more like Himalayan yak type of builds. So you can generally tell by looking at them uh, just what, what type of ungulate they resemble the most. Um now, the Tonka live up in the frozen areas of what we now call Northrend, and very much were about adapting to the cult. You have a question, Sheep? Uh, just a, a quick bit of trivia. Tatanka in uh, the Sioux language means bison. So... Ah, there we go. That explains it. Uh, there was yeah. also a wrestler named Tatanka. <laughs> like yeah, in the Sioux. Late, a, late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> What did the buffalo say to his son when he went off to college? Bye, son. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the dad joke, Nate. Oh, God. I'm sorry. So classic. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I was about to be like, why are you sorry? <laughs> so uh, at any rate, these, uh, these Tonka here, they uh, grew to have a much more uh, brutal type of uh, culture than the uh, Toran would because, as I said, it's about harsh survival. Uh, while the Toran, which would eventually develop a shamanistic culture about harmony with uh, the elements, the Tonka are far more about forcing and bending the elements to your will, insert last airbender joke. Um, mm. Uh, because they're like, it is harsh out here, we do what we can to survive. Um, they don't really have much significance in the lore, they're just kind of there and are like a, an ally to the Horde when you're playing certain campaigns in Wrath of the Lich King. Um, so they haven't really become relevant, but they are kind of a neat, I, I have a personal uh, love of buffalo, they're just very majestic looking creatures, so mm -hmm. I, I like the Tonka uh, from that perspective there. Uh, fun fact, uh, Garrosh Hellscream was actually the one to kind of uh, find and recruit them up there. This was back in his uh, younger days, before he went full uh, warlord crazy uh, war chief. Uh, so he was actually more into, he was open to having allies of other races back then. Uh, another uh, but, Buffalo fun fact, they're delicious. <laughs> I believe it. I've never had any, True. but. Uh, had by some good. burgers. They're mm -hmm. decent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't so now confirm. we have. Now we have the, the Torrens' uh, cousins out of the way. Let's talk about their own uh, particular uh, development here. So they, they're the ones who settled more back in the, the central Kalimdor area where they originated and uh, made reconnections with Cenarius and, again, developed that whole, uh, you know, one with nature type of mentality with strong shamanistic and druidic cultural elements. Mm -hmm. But then as is kind of our, our, a nexus point for most stories that we tell here, the War of the Ancients happened. Yep. Pop quiz, what can you guys tell us about the War of the Ancients? Well, you see, it was a war. <laughs> it Of the Ancients. Split up the continent? Yes, that, that's what it ended with. Um, do you remember, okay, uh, who are the invaders? Uh... That was the Burning the, Legion. Yeah. Yes, very good. Who was the was one who invited like... them in? The biggest egomaniac in Azeroth's history? <laughs> I want to say Ashara, but it's not Ashara. Yeah, it is Ashara. It is Ashara. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. Yep. 
Yeah, so uh, what happened, remember, we have the big, vast Night Elf Empire. We're talking, right. like, you know, it's the, the, the biggest one. This dwarfed the old Mogu Empire, honestly. Uh, but, of course, Jara, being the egomaniac that she was, was not content with all of that. And another thing to remember is that the Hypor Night Elves were extremely racist like they're like we are the best race in the world and they looked down on literally everything else this is going to come into play later here uh well i mean it played right away because one of the things that why she agreed to bring the demons there was that they would assist her in wiping out all of the lesser races so night elves could have true dominion over the world as they deserved uh, but uh the resistance came up, which we've talked a bit about before, and which has some of our old friends, Malfurion, Illidan, Tyrande, big leaders in the Night Elf Resistance era. But um, there were there were several Highborn that were also uh, kind of realized what was going on and defected from Majara's ranks, and they were you know like the big military leaders and stuff. Just one little problem. They still have their Night Elf supremacy outlook and are very, very reluctant to bring in allies of other races, even though they really need them. <laughs> Thankfully, um, a fellow by the name of Jared Shadowsong, who happens to be the brother to Maiev Shadowsong, um, uh, took over the position after a... Uh, uh, sorry, not sorry. Uh, accident with the <laughs> uh, the old uh, xenophobic general, and uh, decided to invite the Torin in and uh, various other allies. And uh, who was one of the greatest leaders of the Torin and Lord the Lord the Ancients? A uh, fellow by the name of Holn High Mountain, uh, who like was a complete badass. Honestly, uh, he has this. Uh, special uh, spear called like the eagle spear that was gifted to him by a wild god he uh was uh blessed by uh wild gods with uh special uh moose antlers that's actually like why they they look different and more moose like that's a wild god gift right there he oh. was uh best buds with uh malfurion and uh, jared shadow song and just played a really crucial role in being able to turn the tide of the war of the ancients uh it's the skin that's yes. where the yeah, skin yeah, yeah. Is from exactly it felt now, so random at the time uh, to head. <laughs> Now, uh, Holen is uh, in the skin. You are seeing him in his uh, Shadowlands form. Uh, he eventually right. yeah. went to he uh, uh, Ardenweald, uh, which is the, the nature-y uh, part of the Shadowlands, uh, which we've talked about in a previous episode. And mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, he uh, works for uh, the Wild Hunt there, helping to uh, you know, keep order in, uh, in all that stuff in the afterlife. But before all that happens... Oh, yep, yep. One last question. I'm sorry. I don't want to. I don't want to hold things up too much. Is but isn't he a hunter skin, or am I mis misremembering? Yes. Yeah. Because he is a hunter. Oh, because he's part of the wild hunt. Mm hmm. Ah. Uh, okay. 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 All right. Yes. Yes. Right. He Continue. is. Not he should every be daddy um, loves this. I can see he's like gets to be the student. It's amazing. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Yeah, not every Tauren is a druid or a shaman. There are many braves slash warriors, and believe it or not, hunting is actually a strong part of their culture. It's kind of that, you know, it's the, the balance. You hunt and you preserve. Um, but uh, Holden had, uh, had a bunch of stuff going on here. He actually had a uh, moose as, like, his uh, best bud named uh, Iriko, and it uh, was uh, for his bravery and rescue of it. Uh, rescue of that moose that he received the uh, special moose antlers from Cenarius. Uh, so, so they always have the demigod's favor. Um, oh, and then he he united several tribes together uh, called the River Main, the Skyhorn, uh, and the Blood Totem, and his own tribe, the High Mountain. Uh, the Skyhorn in particular are really cool because they have this special bond with eagles and like ride giant eagles into battle, which eagles are another of my favorite animals, so I really like that stuff too. Um, and then uh, he also gains a powerful artifact uh, from the Titans known as the Hammer of Kazgarath. And he was actually able to use that to fight Deathwing himself. 
he actually banished Deathwing from the region and mm. uh, made him have to retreat down into wow. the elemental realm of Earth called Deep Holm. And the really cool part is that then Holm was able to use the hammer to purify one of Deathwing's corrupted black dragon eggs and purge the whelp inside from the uh, old god corruption that is just a part of being a black dragon for so much of Warcraft history. Uh, that guy uh, took on the form of a Tauren named Ebonhorn and kind of served as a an advisor to the chiefs of the High Mountain tribes for centuries as a thank you to uh, Holn, uh, their founder, for uh, saving him from corruption. And he's just... Ebonhorn is, is one of my favorite characters in Warcraft. He's just really cool. He's a dragon who's pretending to be this uh, Tauron storyteller. I mean, that those are three really cool things all wrapped up right together. Uh, so uh, all things are doing pretty good for the Tauron. Uh, they, they reserve pretty good relations with the Night Elves over the years to the extent that you know they, they encounter each other. But of course, as we said, the land gets split apart um, with the Shattering. There's just, you know, every, everything is a lot harder. Uh, and uh, the Tauron end up, you know, just on the the half that is still named Kalimdor. That's, you know, just over, over to the west. And... They, they work out a pretty good life overall, continuing their traditions. Uh, but eventually they end up getting a, uh, a mortal enemy uh, in the form of the centaur, who are not a natural race. Uh, the centaur, believe it or not, are the bastard children of one of Cenarius' sons and an earth elemental princess. So yeah, basically, um, a uh, <laughs> a a horse this is human in Barons, right? guy. Did this in Barons. So so you see when when a when a half horse half human demigod in nature and a living rock love each other very much. <laughs> You end up with this. Uh, see, you notice that like the centaur, the build is very similar to Cenarius uh, in that you know horse bottom human top but because of their connections with like you know having an elemental mom <coughs> they have a lot more uncontrollable more violent nature as is the mm. nature of many elementals on azeroth and um they ended up being a huge uh plague to uh the tauren uh constantly fighting for territory as i said the centaur are very aggressive and uh honestly it it forced the centaur, uh, I'm sorry, the centaur forced the tauren to be a nomadic people. They had no uh, singular settlement for a really, really long time. In until we get to Warcraft 3 and the Horde comes along, led by Thrall, uh, who is seeking a new homeland uh, for mm -hmm. the orcs. You know, he left the Eastern Kingdoms actually on advice from Medivh. Uh, who said, you know, go to this place called Kalimdor, and uh, it's going to find a new home there. And besides, I need you to help to defeat the Legion that's coming and all of that stuff. Uh, and so uh, first, uh, Thrall and the Orcs met uh, the trolls on the Echo Isles and uh, helped them win this war against uh, Murlocs, which for some reason they were having a hard time defeating. Uh, granted, the Murlocs were being led by a Naka Sea Witch, but still, it's... Kind of embarrassing. Flirtle talks. They had flirtle talks problems. Don't uh, yeah. talks. I remember playing through that in Warcraft 3. I'll tell you what the, the problem was. I'll bet it was just that uh, the the, the Mur Murlocs were just a bunch of the uh, Flamancer, uh, Fergal, and Toxfin. That, that, that was the problem. Um, but uh, after all of that, when they land on Kalimdor, they end up meeting the Tauren. And... Uh, aid them in driving back the centaur. And it just so happens that they have some very strong shared cultural elements, the focus on uh, bravery and honor in combat, and they just all jive really well together, and uh, so they team up. The, the Tauren become uh, one of the founding races of the new horde. And because all the centaur get uh, cleared out of the lands of uh, Mulgore, as it comes to be called, uh, the, the Tauron are able to build their first permanent settlement on Thunder Bluff, uh, which is mm. uh, kind of hilarious in the sense that uh, you 
need these elevators to get up to it. But the Tauren are like really, really massive and heavy. So those must be some really strong elevators made of wood and rope somehow. <laughs> yes, Subi. Okay, so um, there's a card. Uh, Thunderbluff Valorant. Is that a Tauren riding the lizard thing <clears throat> that buffs the yes. totems? That okay. is correct. The lizard thing you refer mm. to is called a Kodo. They are the racial mounts of Tauren okay. in World of Warcraft. Uh, strong uh, uh, bond that they made with the creatures. Uh, yes, yep. Uh, if it has Thunder Bluff in the name, then uh, that has a connection with the Tauren right there. There you go. Okay. Now, uh, not all of the uh, Torin uh, would uh, join up with this, but uh, we'll get to that part uh, a little bit later. Um, let's see. I seem to have slightly lost my place. N Nate, what's on our next I'm slide? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm distracting. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So we were... <laughs> How dare you be engaged, Schmoopy? <laughs> oh, no, I love it. Uh, so we're talking about how they join up with the Horde, and then we get into Anshi. Is that right? Anshe. Yes, yes. So we're yeah, going to talk Beyonce. a little bit about some Toron culture here, largely because there's a couple cards that need some explaining. Uh, so the Toran have a uh, particular type of uh, spirituality. They uh, Their chief deity is the Earth Mother, um, who is essentially... The Earth Mother. Yes, Earth Mother, watch over us. Um <laughs> 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 and uh they have this uh legend that let's see i'm going to uh pull it up to uh quote verbatim here oh but you have uh, to read it in the voice the tauron worship the earth mother as their creator according to the tauron myth sorrow of the earth mother while the earth mother saw her children falling to the corrupting whispers from below the earth the work of the old gods she tore out her eyes and set them spinning endlessly across the sky her ah. left eye became musha the moon and her right eye became anshe the sun neither of both is better than the other and together they see with balanced vision they are the tauren's own version of the light so clerics of anshe are oh, essentially nightmares. why we <laughs> yeah. can have tauren paladins because they don't follow the light in the same way like that uh drenai are obsessed with the naru or that uh, you know the human civilizations have their uh, cathedrals of the lights and so on and so forth but they uh view uh, the light through the uh, sun and the moon and wield it as a uh, priest and paladins in that particular fashion so uh we have our cleric and our priest of anshe cards that is uh they're essentially kind of like uh holy light slash sun worshipers yes okay uh um water bearer does water bearer also fall into this category do you remember that it was a it was an old card in old um Five yes, and remember, five, it, five. It yeah, restores yeah. the health, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what, what are you asking specifically about I'm it? sorry, I, w I was wondering if he also falls into this category, or is he just, like, happen to be Torin and also a priest? Uh, he just happens to be uh, Torin right there. Um, I think they're, they're saying water in World of Warcraft is very strongly associated with healing, uh, even though this is not a shaman card, I think that's just the flavor they're going for, that gotcha. you're in the desert gotcha. Gotcha. and you're thirsty and he's restore you. Yeah, he just happens <laughs> to be a Tauren for that particular thing. Still a good question. So, so what about see. the blood hoof? I, yes. So we're going to now get into uh, the two major uh, clans that we're talking about. There are many, many Tauren clans here. Um, uh, many of them don't have very much... Uh, specific lore on them but i i want to just uh list karen a is, a, of them is a pretty major character though right yes yes he is so um we have the bloodhoof tribe which we'll get into a little bit more uh karen bloodhoof was the original leader of the of Torin who uh made the alliance with thrall and uh we're going to touch on what happened to him in a bit uh we also have the dawn chaser tribe who is really devoted to that uh, whole paladin thing that i mentioned earlier they actually had this whole thing about finding a uh, a pilgrimage down in pandaria which was pretty cool um there's a the iron hoof tribe 
uh, which uh, lived in a region called Desolus, uh, called the Last Forest, and I guess are pretty tough. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, the Steel Rage, the Stone Hoof, a uh, Wild Mane, Winter Hoof, uh, Tribe Mother, um, Claw Hoof, Dark Mane, Eagle Talon, Hawk Wind. You, you get the you get the general concept of how a, a tribe is named. They're very Native American inspired for this sort of thing. Uh, but the uh, two that uh, play the biggest roles are Blood Hoof and Grim Totem. Now uh, the Grim Totem had a very independent streak and tend to be very hostile to other Tauren. Uh, their leader, uh, Magatha Grim Totem, uh, is known as the Elder Crone of the uh, Grim Totem tribe. Uh, she is a very powerful shaman, and uh, she may or may not have uh, killed some family members in order to get to her position. Um, yeah, a little uh, husband assassination there, if mm. I remember correctly, uh, though it was never proven. Uh, <laughs> she's a regular Carol Baskin. Uh, <laughs> I understood that reference. Yes. Um, but uh, b because of this, she uh, hatches this plot when Garrosh uh, gets promoted to war chief by Thrall because Thrall decides that he needs to go off and focus on shaman stuff in order to save the world from Deathwing and the Cataclysm and all that stuff. Now, um, Thrall had left Cairn Bloodhoof as an advisor to Garrosh of the idea being, you know, you know, help to uh, give him some advice. You listen to what he says and but, you know, give him some advice because you're old and wise and uh, he's young and brash. And Garrosh, you really should listen to this guy. But Garrosh didn't because he's really, really prideful. And uh, he ended up challenging uh, Cairn to a mock garage. Uh, a orcish battle of honor that uh, was to the death. Oh, uh, ooh, Makras are ooh. not always to the death, but this Makras. one was. I have a thing for that. I have a thing. There's a card, uh, and I have a sound for it. It's the <laughs> one that says, "I, I challenge you to Makara." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's from Mashes of Outland, if I remember correctly, though I can't remember the exact name off the top of my head. <clears throat> this becomes harder and harder every year as the, as the card pool becomes bigger. I'm sure that b back uh, when you guys I started playing... You to Makara! There you go. Exactly. <laughs> that one. It was a lot easier to be able to memorize every single card. <laughs> Which one was that? Was that, the, was that the, 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 the one that produces the weapon? Like the 2-2 two -two that produces a weapon? No, I think that's the one that keeps attacking until something dies. Oh, okay. Okay. Where, yeah, yeah, and that, that's a perfect representation of a Makara. You just keep on going uh, until <sighs> the other person's not getting up. 110. The three mana 110. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah and it just boop, 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 uh, and then one of them dies, and that's how it ends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so... No petty magics are no challenge! Oh, that's not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Sorry. I was wondering where that was coming from. But, uh, you got invaded by an old god. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, Karen has to accept this. Otherwise, you know, it makes him look weak. And uh, part of what happens is that uh, for the challenge, uh, each of them is allowed to have their weapon blessed by a shaman. Uh, fun fact is that Cairn's weapon is actually the Rune Spear, the legendary weapon for shamans from uh, Cobalt and Catacombs. Uh, it uh, has this storied history where, like, the, the story of each of the chieftains who has it is etched onto the spear. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's just been passed down for many generations. Uh, but... Garrosh ends up having Magatha Grim Totem as the shaman to bless his weapon. Unknown to him, she decides to take advantage of the situation by secretly poisoning Gorhowl, his axe, who, of course, you know, we have as a weapon and, sh and warrior. Um, and so the moment that Garrosh manages to uh, put a scratch on Cairn, he just dies. Uh, oof. This actually happens <clears throat> in a book. Blood and oof. 
<laughs> and so when, when people started playing the Cataclysm expansion and were told Karen is dead, if they hadn't read the book, they were very confused as to what happened, which is one of the reasons Blizzard now doesn't allow anything really important to happen in the books because people might miss it. Um, so Karen, so his son, Bane Bloodhoof, uh, ends up inheriting the title of Chief, who, that's why, in our legendary card, when Kane dies, you get Bane. Uh, and, but Magatha wants to use this opportunity to seize control over all the Torrents. She wages war against Thunder Bluff. Uh, Bane actually ends up having to turn to Jaina Proudmore uh, in order to get some alliance help to fight back against the invasion. Um, they, they managed to repel Magatha, but uh, Bane decides not to kill her. Instead, he breaks her totem so that the elements don't like her very much and exiles her. Uh, and they end up going to live in a little place called uh, Thousand Needles, which we'll touch down at the very mm -hmm. end here. When you but... say it, you have to go say Thousand Needles. <laughs> <laughs> Exiles to Thousand Needles. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bye, Magatha. <laughs> And yeah, that's that's one of the reasons then that the Grim Totem are just like mortal enemies of all of the other Toron. You occasionally get some who decide to break with that and live more in peace, but under Magatha's leadership, uh, they are extremely aggressive. Uh, and Magatha is constantly power hungry, um, always looking for another scheme to be able to get a hold of some more elemental power and give a have another shot at the well it's not the throne of the Torn, becoming some sort of hive chiefess of uh some sort and being independent from the horde that's the thing that the, the grim totem don't like the idea of being a part of the horde they think all the Torn should be independent uh so that uh that brings us up to let's see wait you, wait, you have a question oh, oh, yes, has a question ahead. we'll ask question her ability, she's drawing cards, she's keeping minions, she's giving away spells. Is that in any reference to lore in any way? It could potentially be interpreted uh, that way um, with her, you know, she has a mastery over spells. But I think in this particular instance, uh, because they're focusing on like her hating music in this time, uh, that it's more of a representation of like, you know, like the songs, uh, the legendary songs right. are the spells. So I think it's more like get these <clears throat> songs away from me is I think okay. more of what that card flavor is going for. But it could be interpreted the other way. You'll notice that they this is like a card that they give for like a very specific title. It's not just mm -hmm. Magatha Grim Totem. So Bane that, music. that, that <laughs> leaves... Uh, that leaves the door open for them to do any more slightly serious Magatha card focusing on like her uh, element power. This is, yeah. this is Magatha with with a um, with motivation. It's yes. not Magatha uh, acting normally. It's like okay, Magatha, imagine okay, this concert has been playing and uh, it's at the Thousand Needles and uh, you're hating it. Uh, what do you do next? It's not yeah. necessarily. <laughs> Right. Do in the wild. Okay. So, so the way that I kind of read it, um, hearing the the lore that Goliath was telling us was that <laughs> since the um, elements no longer are the, the aligned with Magatha, with the the um, staff and whatnot being destroyed, that's the spells being issued from the hand. That's why hmm. you don't get to keep those. That is another good way to interpret it. Yeah. Now uh, she's grabbing said, manpower at the same time. She's trying exactly. to she's trying to get any like she's greedily trying to gather allies and 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 like sell swords behind her or whatever. whatever. Oh right. yes, definitely. Which is why you get to keep the minions, right? Yeah, or she weapons. is. The Grim Totem are not a not a force to trifle with, honestly. Or hero card <laughs> also valid. Ooh, that <laughs> that could be cool to have at some point in the future. All right, Nate, what do we have left on our list? Uh, we here? have the, like ETC and uh, and Thousand Needles. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Now uh, this leads right into our excuse mm -hmm. for talking about Friday. this today in the first place. Um, <laughs> so Elite Tour on Chieftain uh, is interesting because 
uh, it exists as a band in World of Warcraft. You can see uh, them playing at the Dark Moon Fair. Uh, we probably mentioned this at some point back in our Dark Moon Fair episode, but uh, they are actually based on a real life bland, band of Blizzard developers. Uh, and they have uh, those three songs, which are uh, cards. Uh, from the original uh, ETC card, The Power of the Horde, Rogues Do It, and I Am Murloc. Um, <laughs> and you you can hear them singing those at the Dark Moon Fair. Um, now, uh, there is madness. a... Tour- at the Dark Moon Fair. <laughs> but um, th- there is a Tauren who is a uh, part of that. His name is Chief Thunderskins in the game, and he's like uh, the drummer, I believe. Um, but what Hearthstone decided to do was kind of amalgamate all of the band members into one character who they call Elite Tauren Chieftain, uh, rather than that being a band name. It's the name of like a single singer, and Hearthstone is just really taken off with giving this character his own identity in that fashion this is like the fourth uh etc card that we've had because we had the original one we had the uh one from dark moon fair with all the uh the rush minions Mm -hmm. um then we get two in one expansion the band manager and now the legend of rock uh with the awesome power chord stuff we were talking about before so well, and, and the hero portrait, whenever it, it enters, because there's an ETC hero portrait, mm-hmm. um, it has all the drums, too. Yeah. More, more to your point that it's kind of an amalgamation of all of the different band members. Right. And the um, the Dark Moon Fair is also where Blightbore is found, uh, who is, mm-hmm. I think, when, uh, the only band from the Festival of Legends that actually exists in World of Warcraft. All the others are Hearthstone exclusive, but... I mean, I would not mind to see like Poison Bloom become canon, uh, or now I think they they might have some trouble with like uh, having uh, Voon as a rock star since he is <laughs> canonically dead after killing him in a raid many 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 years ago. But I personally it's wouldn't. It's the rock. <laughs> i mean what, what's more like heavy metal like what's more hard rock than coming back from the dead to perform a concert fair <laughs> fair wait 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 tell well, us about the blight bore yeah so th- they are uh they are a band that plays at the dark moon fair um in a different area from elite, elite tour and chieftain plays kind of more like on a big stage in the middle of stuff mm-hmm. uh Blightboard plays in a slightly more obscure dark cave uh down in the woods and that is actually I've been uh, there. W- yes <laughs> <laughs> the, the bar is exclusively key, uh cheap well drinks and uh and and there's like a five dollar cover charge yeah, but they don't check ids though so like yeah i know i've been that place i've been that place <laughs> And actually, several of the Death Knight cards uh, from there, you have the Screaming Banshee, who is uh, actually uh, one of the uh, singers in Blight Boar. Um, and it's basically this, this mini game where you have the Death Metal Knight, who is another card, uh, who is trying to trash the concert <clears throat> and you need to fight him off. Uh, so there's actually a lot of references to uh, parts of that uh, fight or just Blight Boar in general in the, in the Death Knight class. It's kind of the only one from Festival of Legends that has that strong of roots, but um, it's fr- frankly just so much fun as an expansion concept. I don't even mind that there's very little lore connections. Now, as for A Thousand Needles, just to give a little uh, background on that, it is this huge flooded canyon in southern Kalimdor. Uh, well, it's flooded after the Cataclysm. Back in the original vanilla World of Warcraft, it was kind of a bit more like um, y- your typical kind of southwestern United States, strange, rocky uh, geological formation type of stuff. Uh, instead of arches or, or Devil's Tower or plateaus or whatever, it's a bunch of really sharp things, which is why it's called the Thousand Needles. Um, there actually isn't a ton of story that takes place in uh, World of Warcraft uh, in that spot um, until it gets flooded uh, in the Cataclysm expansion, and then you get a bunch of gnomes and goblins that are contesting over it. There were centaur clans, but they eventually they got washed away by all of this. 
Um, and so now you have like some pirates, you have uh, some Twilight Hammer cultists, and of course you have the Grim Totem who uh, end up uh, taking up place there after they're exiled around the time of the Cataclysm. Uh, this is actually a spot during the uh, Burning Legions invasion. Uh, if you play a shaman, you actually get this quest where Magatha Grim Totem actually manages to swallow enough pride to ask someone for help. She goes to the Earthen Ring, this uh, group of shamans that you join with, and it's basically like, the Legion is attacking my home in uh, Thousand Needles, I need you to help me defend the Grim Totem. Of course, um, she has her own ulterior motives in order to get a hold of this powerful thing called the Stormstone that uh, will like, give her incredible elemental powers. And, uh, yes? Are there any other Earth and Ring cards besides that 3-3 in Classic? I was just thinking that. The Farseer? Earth yeah. Ring Farseer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. The the Earthen Ring is a uh, faction neutral group of uh, shaman dedicated to the preservation of the Earth, uh, sim- similar to how the Sonarian Circle is a faction neutral group of druids. Uh, okay. Thrall is a member. Uh, Ragar Earth Fury is a member. Um, lot, lot, lots of uh, ones. Uh, several not coming to my mind right now that are Hearthstone cards. But um, there's several members of the Earthen Ring who could very well be good shaman legendaries in the future. At time of uh, time. yeah, sure. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, and as as a shaman player in the Legion expansion of Warcraft, you join the Earthen Ring. And uh, basically, uh, because they decide that, no, Magatha, you cannot be trusted with this incredibly powerful uh, elemental uh, stone, she basically... Uh, sticks around and you can actually order her around on missions as a follower because she's like well if i can't have the stone i'm not letting it out of my sight uh because i don't i don't i don't trust you with it yeah yeah you're the ones who can't be trusted with this thing so this Uh, portion of the story is uh batty is getting bailed out by the good guys basically yeah kind of um kind (laughs) of and that that is uh just about uh the the state of things uh, last we've heard is that um, after the uh, Fourth War, which is kind of the, the furthest that um, anything in the, the main area of Azeroth after the Battle for Azeroth expansion, um, the Tauron and uh, the Grim Totem are still uh, having a lot of uh, struggles in uh, Mogor, and uh, they're even trying to attack Thunder Bluff. Um, and they still attack in Thousand Needles as well. So it's still a very contested territory. The Grim Totem are still around in all this area. And of course, within the lore of this particular expansion, uh, it says that the festival has been going on for a long time. And they are the neighbors who are tired of you crazy kids blaring up the party so loud at this <laughs> hour and just want to... And but they are instead of calling the cops, they are their own cops who are coming to trash the party uh, within uh, the Hearthstone specific lore of this mini set. How come they call them level ninety etc? Hmm? It's it's not just elite torn chieftain, right? It's like level ninety etc. Um, which version of etc are we talking about? The here? band, right? Uh, uh, hold on, let me. Um, I'll show you the picture. Like when you see their their like posters for their uh, recording, if it's just like the L with the lightning bolt and the ninety or whatever, like you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, that's probably uh, <clears throat> probably originates from the original Blizzard devs band, is my guess. Um, like saying like you know it's part of being what the elite means that you know we're we're mm. probably what max level was at the time or something i don't actually have any background on that to share i'm afraid oh this is funny yes. wait i'm reading they it off the, it. yeah i'm reading it off the wiki they've changed it it started out as level uh originally 10th level, level torn chieftain and then it was level 60 <laughs> elite torn chieftain and then level 70 elite torrent chieftain then level 80 elite torrent chieftain probably just when they changed the like the new level caps oh what do you know probably. i was spot on <laughs> that's really <laughs> funny no yeah so if you look at their like band logos and stuff like how they have the stuff on the drums you'll see um i'll it's hard to see in this picture i'll put a bigger one up but like it says l l90 etc is like the logo and you can see it in a bunch of the hearthstone cards as well um let me 
make it big there we go like you see on the drums there it's it looks like uh, a, I see uh, now. That yeah. this one says yeah. 70 but but yeah there's um in the hearthstone ones uh they did a they haven't shared the the full art but i swear it's on a bunch of these cards but then you can yeah check this out so here's a newer uh, a newer version here and you can see this one says l90 uh level 90 etc ah uh, yeah and it's yeah it's, it's kind of funny <laughs> but i always saw that and Good i was eye. like what the heck is lou etc like it looked like <laughs> and it's the I'm telling it, you how awesome they're gonna rock at that particular time <laughs> and they're getting you amped because you know what they're up to level 90 now <laughs> it is just like uh oh my gosh what is that movie this is spinal tap movie? Yeah, so spinal tap. It goes up to ninety. <laughs> it's just like spinal. It's just like spinal tap, but like instead of turning to eleven, he's like, "Here's sixty, and here's ninety. And it's like, "Whoa, <laughs> that's still ten. Whoa." <laughs> <laughs> it's. I know they've snuck it into the background of some of the card art. I'm looking for it right now on the side while you guys are chatting, because I'll, I'll find it. I swear I saw it. I'm watching you sneak sneak it into the side. Oh, there it is. Yeah, here's one. All right, the, from uh, concert promo Drake. promo Drake. There you go. Uh, here, I'll put it up on the screen. That makes sense. Uh, I just realized it was promo, promo and not proto Drake. That's yeah. really funny. That's so funny. <laughs> uh, it took me oh, a bit no. to catch it as well, honestly. Uh, oh no, that's good. Yeah, so your face. Uh, look at that. It's hold on. Let's, let me level ninety right there. Promo Drake instead of Proto Drake. That's so funny. Do you think so he's funny. soaring or do you think he's floating in place? And just I think he's legs, hovering. Like, Yo, over I, here. I, I think he's, he's soaring. I, I think he's like a, like one of those like advertisements. Like, yeah, uh, circling oh, around. That'd be epic. Yeah. You know, and that would work more with a tradable, right? So yeah, like it's like, it's you're like, right. Now nah, you go, you go around another time. You get somebody else. Go around yeah. another time. <laughs> that's so funny. I think there's one. I think at the the merch booth one or whatever. There's it's in there too. They, I know they've snuck it in other places. Yeah, it it is great. Just how many details they put the, into the art for all this. It is even more impressive that when you think that theories are made by so many different artists who are just kind of given a basic concept to work with. But uh, they must have a lot of love for the uh, the game and backstory behind a lot of this. To, uh, voluntarily go like, hey, yeah, I'm 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 gonna sneak this little element here. This is good. I fun. wonder. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I wonder how much art direction they have if if they're told specifically or or not. Well, uh, I've been, uh, as you know, I like reading the uh, the art books, and so far I I still don't have the. The Year of the Dragon. I recently was able to uh, get uh, Raven, so I've been looking through them again. And uh, according to the book, seems to indicate that a lot, uh, like there, there's basically a like a, a pitch, you might say, to like you know, mm -hmm. here's the basic thing we want you to draw. But the artist has a lot of freedom in the way they conceptualize that. And then, of course, I'm sure you know there's there's feedback and everything. I'm sure that Blizzard will say, you know, we like this version. Why don't you give us some more tweaks? And and there is so much art that get gets submitted, but but is never used. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of the you know like mm -hmm. things like uh, battleground minions. The art for that is often unused art from other things. Like Zap Slywick was originally uh, art for the Boomstay project, but just never ended up being used for a card there. Yeah, I imagine they're also given a lot of like reference material too. Yes, yes, I am certain. Because <laughs> there's a, a legion. Mastery consistency, yes. Yeah, exactly. See, I'm afraid that's uh, that's all that I have for this time, guys. Uh, for for the lore of an entire race, it uh, takes a surprisingly short time to talk about in comparison to some of the other topics we've done. And and of course, Shmoopy Daddy just escaped. We were he was gonna get uh, mm, that sus. quiz. Oh, he'll be back. We will wait. We'll wait. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask Goliath a question. Um, yes. It, w while we wait for Spoopy Daddy's quiz. <laughs> uh, I, when it comes to the Warcraft books, because uh, we, my wife and I, were in a bookstore 
Uh, I mean, we go to this local one all the time. It's close to our house because I'm looking for certain books for my collection. But my wife is looking in the at the Warcraft section, and they had quite a bit of, of Warcraft books. But she has no idea where to start, if she would have to start at the beginning, if any of the books are kind of standalone. Uh, do you need to n- know all the previous books to just kind of start anywhere? Or like, is it something you got to read the first one and then so on and so forth? so forth what do you so think basically all of the books are supplementary uh so so it, i would say that it is difficult to be able to pick up one of the books and start getting into it if you don't already have some concept of the world and lore from the games the, the, well, she I'd does say, play the game okay so she does know this um i'd say that uh Arthas, uh, which just like tells the the full story of the Lich King, is probably a good place to start. I think canonically that might be one of the earliest. Um, but I'd say uh, m- most of the books these days uh, come out in between expansions and tell kind of standalone-ish stories that lead into the next expansion. Mm. But at this point, currently, they are as I said, trying to avoid, like, like they'll hint at things and, like, it will make sense if you read it, but you won't have missed any major plot points if you did it. Um, I would, uh, the, the two that you kind of need to know for the transition between expansions are uh, The Shattering, which is that one I said where uh, Garrosh ends up killing Cairn. Uh, that, that's the whole thing that happens between Lich King and Cataclysm, and so many players who did not read the book were very confused. And then War Crimes, which is a book that takes place between Pandaria and the um, Draenor expansion, uh, which is about how Garrosh is tra- put on trial for all of his war crimes by both the Alliance and Horde and Pandaria, and how he ends up getting uh, broken out by uh, dragons and uh, taken back in time in order to create an alternate universe of orc warriors in order to invade Azeroth. If you haven't read that book, then the the Draenor expansion is suddenly very confusing. Um, gotcha. So I'd say that many of the books you, you could pick up, you just have to make sure that you're aware of precisely when they're taking place in order to have the context, because mostly when they publish these, they're expecting, oh, well, they just finished this expansion, and so they know what, what's happening. There are a couple that are not set in that way. Um, there's a one called uh, Storm Rage, which is a bit more kind of a, almost a night elf politics type of thing uh, involving like the Emerald Nightmare. Um, there is a trilogy uh, called about War of the Ancients, actually. If you guys are interested in the War of the Ancients, this mm-hmm. is actually a time travel story where... Ah. Yes, yeah, so where there's like the old gods are trying to mess with the timeways in order to make it so the Legion won the War of the Ancients. Uh, and so Nazdormu sends uh, some characters back in time in order to make sure that doesn't happen. So canonically, at the same time of the War of the Ancients, you have these beings from the future who are fighting right alongside the Night Elves and Tauron and Dragons and all of that, which is kind of crazy. Um, so that that's something that uh, you might be interested in as well. But I'd say, uh, on general, just make sure that uh, you understand where in the story it's taking place Mm -hmm. between what expansions and whatnot Mm -hmm. and they vary in quality honestly most ones by christy golden are pretty good that's exactly what i was gonna say anything by christy golden is gonna be yes uh some of the others are um well, let me put it this way. I, I got through them because I wanted to know what happened next in the lore, but they were not enjoyable on their own. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, it's that's varies. Okay, so it's time for the uh, schmoopy pop quiz now. And now. It's, I'm, I'm, all right. Pop quiz. And now. Pop <laughs> quiz. Pop quiz. <laughs> with schmoopy daddy. With schmoopy. <laughs> with Nate Wolf. With Dwarf. It takes a long time to say that. <laughs> Very <laughs> um, freaking pause. Okay. Ready. <laughs> now I am I am making up these on the fly here. Uh, okay. Name the three different uh, bovine uh, races. Oh man, dude. Um, 
I can tell you what animals they're uh, like based off of. There's okay. the, the yak point. one, mm -hmm. there's the bison one, and then there's the tauren, which are a little bit more bull-like in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the, the one hunter legendary who, or sorry, the one hunter portrait who was more moose-like uh, in appearance because of his, um, a, 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 of what he accomplished in life. Yep, yeah, yeah, though um, he did get those antlers in life, I will clarify. They just transferred over in, in death. Uh, yes, me. I, I'm going to say, what is the, the Yangle, the Tonka, and the Tauren? Correct. Although I, I will I will give uh, bonus points to Shmoopy for adding in the High Mountain, which do have a distinction there. But yes, uh, Nate is the one who got uh, the <laughs> Who has the answer to sing the in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> you I can't cheat. No. I've literally never cheated. I, I've literally never cheated. So I will. I would rather fail spectacularly and cheat. It's the same man. <laughs> same. We, 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 Nate did For, specify that it was open no, so, so yes. it's not cheating. <laughs> okay. You can, can regurgle this later. Open these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what race is the mortal enemy of the Tauron, and how did it originate? Uh, the mortal uh, enemy is the centaur, and it originated from a breeding between who um, I know it was an Earth Elemental and Scenarius. A son of Scenarius. Scenarius son is the granddad. Scenarius. Very right. close. Very close. Okay. okay. Um, name name four different Torn tribes. Uh, okay. We will go with uh Blood Hoof. We'll go mm -hmm. with um. I just gotta think of cards. Just gotta think of cards. Uh, Blood Hoof. Um, Grim Totem. Mm -hmm. One of the buffs, totems. Um, Dark Hoof was that one of them that you mentioned? Did you say Thunder Bluff? Or no, he Thunder Bluff would work. That's what I was trying to. That's one of those <laughs> one that would work. Uh, Thunder Bluff and, is actually uh, not a clan. That is the unlucky, capital city. Unlucky, unlucky. You guys, you guys sold me out. I lost. Jubated. Okay, uh, jubated. Um. <clears throat> I, li I listed a few different ones that united under the High Mountain tribe. Uh, if uh, you say a, a few, you listed off like eight. The problem <laughs> is, is I get concepts and not specific. <laughs> you just just get two words and <laughs> smash them together. So <laughs> it was like you, you take an adjective and a and a and like a a nature <laughs> noun and and put them together. <laughs> Thunder hoof. Yeah, yeah. Uh no probably not. I'm trying Thunder to think of Hearthstone cards. There are there are like th there has to be. What did you say? Hearthstone dark. It wasn't dark totem. It was there's like dark main dark main. Um, dark main. Totem. Dark main was the only one. I think. So. Let it's me have dark. a look here. I'm checking dark to totem. see. Darth totem. Yep, there there is a dark main. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Thrall, I am your. Uh, totem. I think we have at least three. Uh. Uh, we need a fourth of an, an actual fourth, not just a, like Did a. Did someone like say? A, oh, yeah, sure. Someone said blood hoof. Yep, blood hoof. That yeah. is correct. Fun fact: the blood hoof actually. Uh, well, no, wait. We already said blood hoof. You, we said blood hoof. Said. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I thought you were saying a different one that also has blood in it. Uh, Aramorn has contributed poop totem. He's <laughs> he's he's done well. <laughs> Clearly, that's going to be ding, one ding, of them. Ding 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 ding. Um, I am sorry, ding. Aramorn, that is incorrect. <laughs> oh, grim ding. grim totem, Ooh. high mountain. We said grim totem, high mountain, high mountain, wild we say, mane. We didn't say how much. Mm -hmm. Yep, high mountain is one. Uh, I thought we had said that. Did we say rune totem? We said in a different question sheet. Keep up, uh, keep up. Come on, come on. Come on. Blood totem, high mountain, blood. Yep, blood totem. That's one. That's one of the ones. It wasn't poop totem. It was blood, blood totem. totem. Yeah. Right. And if you have a no. blood poop totem, you need to go to the doctor right away. <laughs> <laughs> now, fun fact is that in the Legion expansion, the blood totem tribe actually ends up making a deal with the Legion and doing the whole drink the demon blood thing that the orcs did long ago, and they become the fell totem. So you're fighting these demonic moose antler tauren. That high sounds mountain. awesome. I thought you were going to say something about like a blood poop totem, and I was very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> concerned or disappointed? 
Let's be honest. Well, well, actually, actually they played when it finally played out. In the final More lies. They, out. they changed both. when they were corrupted. They became the blood poop totem. <laughs> no. Oh my I, gosh! No. You guys need to be careful. I'm going to come up with an episode name based off of this. And I, um. ask, you, can I ask a question. So oh my the, god! These the guys are red. Themselves. In in um in Hearthstone, the totems obviously are a, are a, a force of offense and defense. Um, in WoW, or 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 is it similar where it's like there are these tokens that the that the that the torrents are basically producing? Um, yeah, you yeah, get to uh, drop them if you're um, a shaman. You get to drop totems. Yes. I was totems a totem. Are honestly shaman. something that's a bit more game mechanic than really okay. fleshed out lore. Uh, frankly. Okay. So, so when you play a shaman in World of Warcraft, your abilities are based off of things that lore-wise only like the shaman equivalent of certain races can do, like hex, which turns people into frogs. That's really only like a troll voodoo doctor thing. And okay. so, like the, these totems, that's a thing kind of like that the, the orcs in Toron uh, do. Um, they, they're basically kind of a combination of contacting like ancestor spirits uh and a connection with the elements but the lore like the rules for totems has never been like fleshed out, really fleshed out. Life, okay, as okay. far as i so, am like, aware you it's can, a thing you like, do in the game but okay yeah, yeah you're like you run into battle and you drop like you can have assigned certain totems to your keys on your keyboard and you drop certain ones to give like area effects to your party like gotcha. extra damage or healing or whatever, okay. right? And you just drop it, and you as long as you stay in that radius or diameter of the the totem, uh, you get the effect. So and I'm like, uh, I'm paying I'm paying one mana for this, and it's defining my meta, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it's not fully flushed out. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, I'm on board. I'm signing up. Yeah. Good. So the the way I I understood it is it was more like the the elements were the the things, and the totems were just ways that they were you know kind of like wands and and other like in a the, the sense yeah kind of like, like superconductors for connection with the elements maybe yeah but then there's this whole ancestor sphere thing that gets thrown in shaman is honestly the most confusing amalgamation of abilities that exists class-wise in the lore <laughs> Which because they don't they don't know they're just kind of reaching out for anything they're just kind of right. like yeah I'll take it all I'll take That's it all yeah. whatever you get there's different versions oh. of shaman from different races and the uh, classes in WoW and Hearth so just kind of merge it all together so which is why I can talk to ghosts I can summon fire and I can turn people into frogs and that somehow is all connected sure yes. <laughs> okay uh, a couple more questions for you to be okay what what is the chief deity of the Tauron, and what is the connection with the sun and moon? Okay, the connection of the sun and moon was uh, somebody ripped out their eyeballs and tossed them into the sky, and they're forever traveling, which actually makes a lot of sense inertia-wise, but one turned in the sun and one turned into the moon. Um, as far as the chief deity, uh, uh, the part... That I hooked on to was there's no like actual like it's a Yak Loa. It's like a classic Hearthstone voice line from mm -hmm. a character. Your Sakara. classic Hearthstone voice line from a character. The blank so mother. Face? Come on, come on, come on. M M mother is part of it. The yes. <laughs> now I just have the song stuck in my head. <laughs> and the shredding guitar riff when it's breaking down. Uh, um. Or brood mother, and it's definitely not the brood mother. It's uh, it's a, it's the place where we live. <laughs> the Gaia <laughs> mother. What? <laughs> the Gaia mother. Oh my god! <laughs> Biggest hint ever. M mother Earth. Oh! oh! Earth, 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 Earth mother. Earth, Earth mother. Yeah. Okay. Earth okay. mother is Earth the mother. Ripped out her North. eyeballs and was like, "Ha ha!" All right, got it. All right. Yeah, uh, in in a Toran legend, as a way of helping to uh, protect them from old god corruption, essentially. Um, okay, let's see. The Earth Mother is near. Exactly. That's the one. Okay, now let's see. Um, you know, what? I'll let uh, Nate. Uh, you come up with the last question here. Mm. No pressure. Mm. Make it good. No pressure. Do your worst. 
don't do your worst. That'd make a terrible show. Do your best, but also <laughs> like challenge me. Um, Face me. <clears throat> I'm already fairly challenged. It shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> Who? I got one. Yeah, you do it. Oh, go ahead. I could do it. Who yeah, did the the super metal or punk action of ripping their opponent's heart out? Okay, so uh, for some That's background, I bought this skin in the bundle that that supported the last Wild Open because I was like, you know what? I really like supporting uh, my format and I like supporting little tournaments, and I think it was the first money I ever spent on Hearthstone. So, so, um. I know him as the Thunder King, mm-hmm. but he rips out. Oh, he rips out Ra's heart and consumes it, mm-hmm. and thus becomes like supercharged Uber Metal, and it's just like, yeah, we do the thing now. So that's that's my <laughs> that's my that's my detail mm-hmm. for that question. Yeah. Do you re- so? Yep, Thunder King is the title. Do you remember his name? It's um. It's like like low ren or or you or, have the basic sounds right a little a uh, couple yes. of the consonants are mixed. I up. do that. <laughs> the, yeah, the vowels are correct. The consonants are not. That's as close as I'm probably going to get. Would you like to phone a friend? <laughs> I will phone a friend. Yes, please. It's Lei Shen. That there, is you go. there you go. There you go. All right. Ding, well, ding, 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 I ding. was not keeping score at all, but I think that you did pretty well overall, and I'll pass you anyways. <laughs> I'll pass you. You just won a million dollars <laughs> courtesy of Goliath the Dwarf. Yay! <laughs> How many dwarf bucks did I get? 